Good morning, Robin. Good morning. What are we planning today, Robin? Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me update everybody. So we did not go for a sunrise hike this morning. Wait, you forgot to tell everybody, good morning, everybody. I did. Oh, you said good morning, Robin. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> I do that because Robin hates it. We got to bed a little late, so that didn't help. And then at around four o'clock in the morning, it kind of freaked us out. Something was climbing on our trailer. <laughs> and I don't know of any species of anything that would be climbing out here. There's I don't think it could have been a person because it could have... If it was a person, I think... I think we would have known if it was a person. It would have shook the trailer a lot more than it did. So I don't think it was somebody playing games with us. Um, maybe it could have been a big bird sitting on the awning or something. I don't, I honestly don't know, but it kind of freaked us out. Oh, and, and, and I heard coyotes. Okay, so this is, I, I didn't grow up like in a city or anything, but it's not like I grew up camping with coyotes. So I was kind of freaked out about that. I didn't want to let the dogs out. It was dark. I couldn't close. see. And they were pretty close. Um, so that kind of freaked me out. So we had coyotes, and then we had trailer shaking because something was on the roof and I also I don't think and so but then we were also just tired but I also don't think it would have mattered because when we googled what time to sunrise it said 7 30 so we were going to get up and about 6 30 and then drive to Buffalo Point and then hike up of it and so that would have taken us probably at least 45 minutes by 7 15 the sun was already up so we would have missed it anyway. So if it says the sun is rising at 7.30, that really means it's rising at 7. <laughs> Little things. This means when it's all the way up. The yeah. sun has risen. Yeah, I guess. In any case, things you don't know unless you've done it before. So I'm glad we didn't get up early for it because we would have never been able to get up because Nover? we were never, never, we would never, we'd have never been able to get up a hill to see it in time anyway. So I'm just getting a little bit of work done and we are running the generator today again. So I guess it is charging the batteries. It didn't appear to the first time I've done it, but now that the batteries have been completely completed, I, I can see that the AC is definitely charging the batteries when the generator is on um, so that that's good uh, but when the batteries are charged they'll get you through a night so at 10 o'clock I turn the, the generator off we had the inverter off so it was just lights the radio and the furnace and the, the fan from that furnace must take a bit of power because by this morning, uh, I started to put the awning in, for example, and it was it was coming in, but very sluggishly. So um, we need another solar panel. Yeah, we need a better charge controller first. The charge controller that this camper has is a. Paltzwitz modulation PWM charger. Basically, all it basically does is maintain the batteries and make sure you don't overcharge them and that kind of stuff. Other than it doing like overcharge protection and that kind of stuff, it's not terribly sophisticated. I did look around a while back and you can get a multi-point uh, power tracker charge controller, an MPPT, and I think they were like only 110 bucks. So I have to do some research on that, but without getting too scientific about it, it's it's Thank pretty goodness. simple. Yeah. If you have a solar panel that says it's 100 watts, and it's a 12 volt panel, well technically it's not a 12 volt panel, it's more likely an 18 volt panel. Um, or it's above 12 volts. It's not 12 volts. So 
the actual 100 watt rating is based on its actual voltage and the best amperage it could put out. So, but we'll just do simple math. Let's, let's, this is only 100 watt on the roof, but just for simple math, let's say it was really just a 12 volt panel at 10 amps. That'd be 120 watts. But when your batteries are at 10 volts and you're putting 10 amps into them, you're not putting in 120 watts of power. You're only putting in 100 watts of power. If your batteries are down to 8 volts, you're only putting in 80 watts of power. Yeah. It doesn't matter what the solar panel is putting out voltage wise. It only matters what the batteries are charged to at that point. So you're getting the amperage, but you're not getting the voltage. So what that means is you're not getting the full wattage potential. Again, this I'm trying to simplify this as much as possible. If your batteries are not the same voltage as the panel, it doesn't matter. You're not going to get the same wattage as the panel. What the multi-point power tracker, the MPPT charge controller does, is that it has basically a voltage converter. So the power coming from the solar panel into the charge controller may be at 18 volts however many amps but the battery is only at 10 volts so we're going to convert that 18 volts down to 10 volts which means you're going to have more amperage the power that's coming into the charge controller is converted from 18 volts to a voltage that matches the battery and then the amperage coming through is increased so now your battery is getting the same wattage to charge it that's actually coming out of the solar panel so by simply changing the car charge controller, you're going to make a, it could be literally the equivalent of adding an extra panel on your roof. It's, it's that much more efficient. So. Too much talking. That's what editing's for, Robin. <laughs> How about just not talking as much in the first place? I try to get my thoughts together. You're just a big blabber mouth of boringness. Anyway, that would be your first upgrade, honestly, I think, would be to change the charge controller. So. Do you? Yeah, you I do. Think? I do. I don't. I do think. Is that what you think, John? I think it. I do think it. Is it? Is it what you think? So back to what I started this video on. What would I start this video on? More time. So back to what he started this video on. What did I start it on? I started it. What did you start it on? Said, what do we want to do, Ferb? What are we going to do today? Well, I guess, oh, you mean at, at, uh. I said, what do we want to do about Boise? In Boise, Idaho. That's our next stop, Boise, Idaho. About six hours drive. We probably should get going because I get sleepy when it gets dark. You do because you're a well sleepy baby. Um, what's in Boise, Robin? Have you, have you Mountains. researched? This is so annoying. It's not even hot out here. The button doesn't work. See, they're crap. Like everything else on this camper. At least the generator works. Oh my God, the water is so far away. You don't want to walk to it? No. Okay. Nope, not even a little bit. Not even a little bit? It's far, isn't it? Yeah. I don't even see it. It's right there, about 1,500 feet away. I'll go 500 and see if I can see it in the camp account. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm just stepping on all kinds of... Right here, the surface is completely solid. It's not really sand at all, it's gravel. So once you get past the first part, it's pretty easy to walk on. Is that a buffalo blocking my path? Yes, it is. So I guess I'm not going to the beach this way. I'm not doing that other trail. All right.
Which one? Of, oh, okay. That's fine. We'll just go to the ranch. I think our generator is still running, but we can't even hear it from here. Hi, birdie. Yeah, you can hear it from here, but it's not very loud. All right, got our Colorado National Monument sticker finally up, and to accompany it, our next stop was here at Antelope Island. All right, so here we are at Ladyfinger Trail. We're gonna go down to the beach. Okay, so here we are on finally at a beach. Finally. Obviously has receded as the year has gone well, by. Well, definitely used to be here. Yeah. So this is all solid here. It's, well, it's, it's pretty hard. It's stinky. Yeah. It's stinky, Robin. Do you think buffalo come out here? No, there's nothing out here. They can't drink the water, and there's no food. Okay, this is the Salt Lake. We're here. We're here. Wow, it is crystal clear. Is it? Yeah. Get out of it with your shoes. Get out of it with my shoes. So here we are gonna at stink. the on this side of the Salt Lake. I'm not sure if it's north or east or west or whatever, but on this side, it's about six times saltier than the ocean. On this side? On this side. On the other side, it was about two times saltier than the ocean. Significantly salty over here. Pretty much very little can actually live in it. And as you can see, it's like crystal clear. Huh? It doesn't necessarily feel like any different than regular water. Oh yeah? Wow, it is crystal clear. This surface is like, it's just, it feels like you're walking on stone. It's kind of be good if I, hey, can I use your flip flops? Or your whatever they're called? Because it's kind of rough on the feet. Okay, hurry, because I want to go out too. Okay. All right, I'm more prepared this time. your shoes. A little dirtier looking. Approximately a foot deep right here. Let's see if this is, now there's actually sand. There's actually, well that's salt. I'm sure that's salt. Ooh, it's a little cold, but not any colder than uh, the Pacific Ocean. Sure clear, ain't it? Yeah, that's awesome. I wonder. That is really cool. It's all right, doggy. Believe me, you don't want to go in this water. It's probably not very good for you. Don't drown, Robin. Huh? 
No, there's nothing. There's nothing but like microscopic kind of things. No fishies, no nothing. It's a little cold. I'm having a hard time. I could come help you, but I got dogs. Yeah, I know. I'm recording because you might fall and it could be, huh? There goes one on. I'm recording because you might fall and it could be, it could be funny. What? I'm recording because you might fall and it could be funny. You're a jerk. Yeah. Fall, fall, fall. Oh, you survived? I did. Oh. Ooh, something's swimming. What?